Hi everyone, uh, it's Kimberly. I'm doing the abnormal psychology part of the AP psychology test prep. I'm really excited to be here. So first we're going to be looking at psychopathology. Psychopathology, um, it's abnormal psychology. Um, we're going to first look at abnormal behavior. So abnormal behavior, what is it? It has four parts to it. It deviates statistically from typical behavior. It's maladaptive, so what that means is it interferes with a person's ability to function in a particular situation. It's labeled as abnormal by society in which it occurs, and it's perceptual or a cognitive dysfunction. So, for example, um, self-mutilation is considered uh, abnormal in the United States. So let's look at psychoanalytic. Interactions among the ID, the ego, and the superego are responsible for a great deal of abnormal behavior. Um, this is again another idea that we're going to further discuss. It's um, an example is a negative early childhood experience that could conflict between the superego and the ID. So if you look at this picture right here, um, that might seem familiar. So just kind of think about that picture when you look at psychoanalytic. Humanistic, it suggests that abnormal behavior is a result of people being too sensitive to criticisms and judgments of others. So an example is maybe like having low self-esteem or a negative self-regard. Now, um, another uh, term that is important to abnormal psychology is the humanistic. It's a suggest, it suggests that abnormal behavior is a result of people having... Um, oh, sorry, we just went over that. It's a, actually, we're looking at cognitive right now. And it's the views of abnormal behavior as a result of faulty or illogical thoughts. Um, this reinforces um, maladaptive thought process. So now we're going to look at behavior. Behavior is the notion that all behavior is learned, even abnormal behavior. So it's reinforcement of depressive behavior. So biological. Biological is abnormal brain function due to either structural or chemical abnormalities in the brain. Again, keep in mind that these are all different views of abnormal psychology. Now we're going to look at social cultural, which means that society and culture help define what is accepted as um, acceptable as behavior. So, um, you know, as we said before, in abnormal behavior, um, one of the examples of self-mutilation is considered abnormal in the United States. Let's look at D. S-M-I-V-T-R. This is very familiar, I'm sure. It's the Amer American Psychiatric Associations, Association's Handbook for the Identification and Classification of Behavior Abnormalities. It contains diag diagnostic criteria, background, and prevalence of disorders that are used to classify behavior across five dimensions or axes. So we're going to look at what these five dimensions are. Axis 1 through 5. Axis 1, it's concerned with the major disorders, for example, schizophrenia and mood disorders. Axis 2, it includes personality disorders. So, for example, um, avoidant and dependent personalities and mental retardation and such like that. So we're looking at axis 3, which is physical disorders that have an impact on behavior. So disorders are not limited to disorders of the brain, but also include physical disorder that might interact with behavior abnormality. Axis 4 is um, assesses the level of psychosocial and environmental stress uh, that the person is experiencing. And Axis 5 is the overall assessment of the person's level of functioning. Sweet. So now we're going to be looking at anxiety disorders. Well, um, an anxiety disorder is characterized by sweating, increased heart rate, and a general feeling of being paralyzed, and that's an equivalent of a panic disorder. Another type of anxiety disorder is GAD, generalized anxiety disorder, which is characterized by almost almost a constant state of um, auto, autonomic nervous system arousal and feeling of dread and worry. Um, the observed Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, OCD, is characterized by involuntary persistent thoughts or obsessions, as well as compulsions or repetitive behaviors that um, really are very time consuming and maladaptive. And now we're going to look at PTSD, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, which is caused by exposure to trauma. Um, a lot of uh, veterans usually come back with this because um, they, are they are exposed to war and violence. Um, or another anxiety disorder is having a phobia, which is irrational fears of common events or objects. So maybe like fear of snakes or 
fear of being in open pub in open spaces or even um, closed spaces. So keep in mind that there are different types of um, anxiety disorders. So now we're going to look at the somatoform disorders. So what this is, um, it's a psychological disorder is characterized by physical symptoms without any actual physical um, causes. And then we have the conversion disorder. Um, psychological and problems manifest itself as a, um, as a deficit in psychological function. And then we have hysteria. Um, Freud believed that these symptoms were caused by psychological conflicts whose resolution resulted in the, res in the resolution of the physical problem. So now let's look at fictitious disorders, and that's when a person inflicts injury or ingests toxins in order to produce symptoms, so kind of like trying to fake uh, a sickness. And then we have the hypochondriasis, which is irrationally concerned with having a serious disease. So we're looking at mood disorders, and what mood disorders are, it's an extreme disturbance of emotional balance. Um, we have three types that we're looking at. The first one is major depression, which is characterized by a depressed mood, a general lack of interest in things that were once enjoyable, a low self-worth, low energy, and possibly by thoughts of death or suicide. Um, and then we're going to be looking at bipolar disorders, which they're actually two types that are really important. The first type is the one, the most common one, which exhibits severe depression, similar to um, unipolar or major depression, but it has infrequent manic episodes. And then the second time is primarily manic, which is characterized by extreme talkiveness, increased uh, self-esteem, excessive pleasure seeking, and lack of sleep. And we also have three types, um, cycles from normal to the third type, which is cycles from normal to manic depressive. So it cycles between the first type and the second type. Now we're going to look at seasonal effect, affective disorder, which sometimes is shortened as SAD. It's a mood disorder that affects people mostly during winter and when the daylight hours are short. So low levels are energy of um, low levels of light makes some people, um, you know, depressed and things like that. Um, we're going to quickly look at schizophrenic disorders. Uh, schizophrenia is um, a family of disorders of thoughts and behaviors um, which share the common features of delusions, hallucinations, and disturbed or inappropriate emotional responses to environmental stimuli. Um, and then we have dopamine hypotheses, which is the theory that suggests that schizophrenics have an excess number of dopamine receptors in the brain, which may account for many of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. And the disorganized schizophrenia is characterized by incoherent speech and flat or inappropriate emotional effect. And then we have catatonic schizophrenia, which is um, rigid body postures for extended um, periods of time. And then paranoid schizophrenia characterized by auditory hallucinations and feelings of persecution. And finally, we have undifferentiated schizophrenia, which is a category for a schizophrenia who exhibit multiple symptoms that are not easily categorized into the other ones that we just talked about. And we have residuo um, schizophrenia, which is when people currently display some schizo tendencies or traits but are not currently profoundly schizophrenic. Personality disorders. So what are personality disorders? Um, um, they're characterized by the pervasive expression of extreme abnormal personality constructs with which interfere with normal social functioning. So a couple of examples of these might be paranoid personality disorder, which is characterized by extreme distress and suspicion of others. Antisocial personality disorder is marked by disregard for the rights or interests of others. Narcissist personality disorder is characterized by self preoccupation and the need for others to be focused on oneself. So if we look at the little meme, it says, I don't always webcam with someone, but when I do, I stare at myself. <laughs> I, that was kind of funny. <laughs> and then um, dependent personality disorder characterized by a need to be cared for. So just kind of being extremely um, dependent. And then the hist histronic personality disorder which is characterized by excessive emotional reactions and excitability as well as the need for attention. 
Cool. So now we're looking at dissociative disorders. Um, dissociative disorders are involved in dysfunctions of memory or altered um, self, sense of identity. An an anterior grade amnesia is the loss of memories occurring after a traumatic event. And then retrograde amnesia is the loss of memories that from before the traumatic event. So for example, if um, a really cool movie that I like to cite or think about is Fifty First Dates. Um, that she suffers, the main character suffers from anterior grade amnesia because she actually can't retain new memories after she gets into the car accident. And then we have um, fugue, which is the sudden and complete loss of identity. So sometimes caused by severe stress and then followed by the assumption of a new identity. So you might have seen this maybe like on movies also where like the person completely forgets who they are and they need help kind of restarting their life. And then we have dissociative identity disorder, which is DID, did, um, formerly multiple personality disorder. That's what it used to be called. But um, it's the appearance of two or more distinct identities in one individual, and the identities may or may not be aware of each other, and the personality that manifests itself may depend on the environmental or social context. That, again, that's, um, you might have seen that in movies. That's a really interesting uh, disorder. Um, go ahead, and now we're going to be looking to behavior disorders. Um, we have ADHD which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. It's a condition in which there is evidence of inattentiveness, which includes difficulty paying attention in class, trouble listening, difficulties in organization, forgetfulness, and distractibility. And then we have autism, which is a complex disorder that has been increasingly diagnosed in children over the last decade. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You should look at that also. Um, and then we have Oppositional def def Defiance disorder, which is a childhood disorder also, and it's classified as an ongoing pattern of anger-guided disobedience, hostility, and defiant behavior towards authority figures that goes beyond the bounds of normal child behavior. And then we have Asperger's syndrome, autism spectrum disorder, ASD, and that's characterized by significant difficulties in social interaction and nonverbal communication, alongside restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior and interest. It differs from other autism spectrum disorders by its relative preservation of linguistic and cognitive development. So um, that covers pretty much all of it. So we're going to review very quickly. We're having a little mini review. Um, this is a question that you might see on an AP exam. It's been on previous ones. It, I'm not saying this will be on there or it will be worded the same, but this is just kind of a format, kind of get a feel for what it's like. Um, so the question says, a physical condition such as vitamin B12 deficiency or exposure to neurotoxin that can have effects on the brain, the nervous system, or behavior would most likely be noted in which axis of the DSM IVTR during a psychosocial evaluation. Um, so kind of think back to the beginning, part one of abnormal psychology. Um, where would this be? Keep in mind, neurotoxin, that means it's kind of chemical, and then it says can have effects on the brain, the nervous system, or behavior. So think about that. If you need more time, go ahead and pause it, and it would be in access three. If you need more clarification, go ahead and look at part one, but keep in mind that, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the only way to really remember it is maybe making some flashcards or things like that might help. So which of the following are most characteristics of a dissociative disorder? Um, so go ahead, look, read through the options. It could be A, B, C, D, E. Really think about what the question is asking. Um, so most characteristics of a dissociative disorder. Answer being memory dysfunction and or altered perceptions of identity. So that was answer E. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to email us, the online tutors, we're more than happy to help. And next question, depression has been associated with low levels of neurotransmitters. So which neurotransmitter this be the chemical? And it's called serotonin. <clears throat> so that's it. That covers part two of the abnormal psychology portion. So good luck on the AP exam test. 
And again, as I said previously, flashcards really do help. So um, go ahead and remember to look at the links below. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to email us and we'll be more than happy to answer back. <coughs> so <coughs> good luck.